And we're back with the Chihuahua. Here's my reference photo of our subject. We are working on the ears today. Yes, we are. Back to the reference photo one more time. This is what we're going for. Let's go. Hi there and welcome to Mimi's Art. Today we're working on the ear and I'm still working on this dog. Actually, it's still on my easel and unfinished. So, <laughs> you know, buckle up, come along for the ride. I hope you enjoy this. Um, I'm starting here with a, a round brush and I'm actually just working on the brown outside. And it's all in one color. And what I'm do basically doing is laying down one layer of color in the direction of the fur that I see in the reference photo. Now, this whole video, I can tell you right now, there's no fast forwarding in this video. This is all real time. You'll see some cuts though, because I do edit out when I'm reloading my brush at times when it takes a bit longer or when I'm mixing paint, just so you know. But everything is actually done in real time. This is the first time I'm not actually fast forwarding through footage, interestingly enough. Let me know what you think of that. Right now I'm going around the ear and trying to follow my sketch. You can see there's a little bit of green kind of in that white area. That was my mistake when I stuck the background on there. I just like messed up a little bit, but I'm just gonna go over it with this brown color. Right now we are in the middle of a heat wave. So I have actually been not painting or editing or anything like that in like a hot minute. It's because it is super hot here. And also in my house, there are fans going everywhere. So currently I'm sitting in my van with extension cords going to my laptop because it won't hold a charge for long doing this voiceover. In this particular part, you'll see me leaving a bunch of gaps and that is on purpose because I'm going to leave those those areas to fill in with different colors later and you'll see why later on in the painting. Now here I've changed color to a bit of a lighter brown and I'm going to start doing the inner part of the ear here. I am changing brushes. This is an angled flat brush and I'm going to go back into the outer part and this is a slightly different color as well. I love this brush because you can do a lot of like cool straight lines with them but if you change the angle of your brush and you use more the flatter part you can actually really fill in areas really quick with with like a color and paint as well. So it's good for blocking in as well as for kind of like hair like strokes. Here you see me go back in between where I left those gaps with a different color and I'm going to overlap a little bit of what I've done and I'm going to go and fill in the white areas that are still there. Back to the middle there and the inner ear fur as I call it. And this is another color. See what I do is I do a layer of paint in the one color that I have at that point and I go around and do all of that in that color and then switch to the next color once I'm done. Now here you see me, um, have, I've switched again, and this is more of a creamy color. It doesn't show that great on camera um, because it's kind of like a creamy white, a little bit of a brownish hint into it, but it doesn't pick up on camera very well. I'm sorry about that. But what I do, and I've explained this in other videos too, is I take a color, I mix it or I don't, sometimes I go in straight from the tube, but I just do the color all around the area that I have set out to paint. And once I feel like I'm done with that color, I go on to the next one. Now the tip of this brush actually makes really nice pointed strokes. I really enjoyed working with this brush and trying to get a more fur type texture into my painting. back in with a darker color I am still building up my layers that's how I create that realism is one color go around and do what I think I need to do and then change color and go back in and do what I think I need to do <laughs> and that's how I build up the layers and that's how the fur starts to look a lot more realistic Now I'll pop up the reference photo for you once again so you can see what we're trying to achieve and where I'm at at the moment
you'll see me thinking once in a while here you kind of saw me hovering above the painting where is my next stroke going to be what am i going to do next sometimes i just don't know here i'm going back into that little area there where i've left some gaps some spaces it's all done on purpose so that i can create a nice build up i do have to tell you though that even though i said that was on purpose the majority of this part of this painting was a struggle. I had no strategy going in. I've never painted a dog's ear before. I mean, heck, I've never painted a dog before. This is my first dog portrait, you guys. So <laughs> yeah, there was no real strategy here. Um, I put in some dark hairs in there that were sticking out from that inner part. So I'm attempting to put those in, but you'll see me fiddle with that throughout the painting. Okay, so you also just saw me fix a mistake. I use my finger, I wipe it um, because it's still wet. You can easily wipe that off. If you don't like doing that, you can take a clean brush, make it a little wet and wipe the paint away that way because acrylics are water-based. The more water you add to it, the more it dilutes. Add enough water, you can just fix mistakes that way. But I personally use my fingers. Now I'm going around and putting some more shadows in places where I feel shadows are needed. Just keep following my reference photo and just keep fiddling away at it until I feel like I'm getting to what it should be. But as I said, this painting was a bit, or this part of the painting was a bit of a struggle. I did not know what to do. I'm going to point something out now that I'm going to come back to later is that I made a mistake with this outer part of the ear and um, I will I will get back to that in a bit. For now, we're just layering over that light color to create some fur texture again with that angled brush. It does a beautiful job at creating fur type strokes and hair like texture. Here you see that I've changed to a shorter and smaller liner brush and I'm going to go in with some light gray. I'm trying to layer that inner part of the ear to make it look like the reference photo or what I'm actually perceiving it looks like, right? It just it, it all depends on what your eye perceives and what you interpret your reference photo to be. But yeah, this is like kind of the second layer after that first creamy whitish layer. This is my second layer going in with a pretty fine brush just to try to get some fine fur like strokes in. Well, I was not happy with the lines, you know, right there with the hair. So I'm trying to fix it a little by painting around and over what I've already painted just to kind of soften it up a little bit. They were actually quite harsh. So that's what I just did there. I really hope watching me work is going to help you. I know there's a couple of gaps. I'm not narrating the whole thing. I think music is beautiful as well. And sometimes you just have to watch and see and then maybe duplicate and just try it out yourself without too much of my ramblings. Here you see I changed the angle of my hand and how I do the strokes. Sometimes I can get away with it that way, other times I can't. And then my tip is to just flip your canvas, you know, into a direction that you can actually paint in a, in a way that works for you. Whether you're right-handed or left-handed, it makes a difference. In this case, I got away with just going up from the top down.
still going away with that same liner brush. This is a very short one, so you can make really cute little short strokes with it. And now I change to the round brush. I don't use one brush for all. I change it up. I like to use the angled brush, the liner brush. This is a round brush and it creates a very interesting array of strokes. So it doesn't look uniform, right? It needs to look as realistic as possible. At least that's what I'm going for. So the round brush is also really great for fur like texture. And again, trying to fix those hairs a little bit, I'm going to kind of go over a little and around to soften it up. Here you can see I've grabbed a bit of a darker shade of gray going over what I've already done, leaving some gaps, overlapping some of my browns just to create a beautiful buildup of layers. So this is trial and error unfolding in front of you. I have had no art education, so sometimes I just try and do things. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. And I learn by doing, and that is okay. And sometimes you just have to go that way. Now here you see me putting the gray around the edges. Now this is what I mentioned in the video before. I should have started with this. I'm gonna pop up the reference photo for you so you can see what I mean. Because there's a bit of a grayish, whitish glow around the ear. And if I would have put that in first before I put in my brown layer, I would not have to come back and try to paint in between those strokes and kind of over top. And then I potentially need to go back in with brown because I, on like I doubt it like undoubtedly will be covering some of that brown that needs to come back again so yeah I didn't think this through my strategy for the other ear will definitely be to kind of put in that grayish background first Fun fact, my first ever dog was named Bonnie or Bonnie in English, and I got her when I was about 12, 13 years old. I absolutely love dogs. They're wonderful companions to have, and um, I would love to have another dog. Currently, we do not own a dog, but um, yeah, I think in the future, there will definitely be a dog again back in my household. I, I really enjoy dogs. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful pets and animals. You see I switched to a even finer brush there just to try to get back into that little background. Um, really messing around trying to get that grayish glowing type effect and um, yeah lesson learned. Next time I might need to study my photo a little bit more before just jumping in but that's okay. You learn by doing right and the next time you won't make that mistake again. It's okay. It's it's trial and error. You learn. You don't if you don't make mistakes that doesn't help you either. So the right ear has yet to be done. Even today, it still has yet to be done. It's been probably two months since I've painted this part. And because I struggled so much with this ear, I really put it off because I'm like, oh gosh, like I, I was really discouraged after painting this part, even though in the end it looks okay. I just, I haven't even gotten to that other ear yet because I'm like, oh gosh, I'm gonna potentially struggle here again. <laughs> so I put it off, but it's gonna get done. It will get done eventually.
at this point i have been working on this painting for 25 minutes i know you've been only watching 15 minutes because i've been cutting out my mixing and my reloading of the brushes so for 25 minutes in and this is what i have painted and here again i am going around doing all kinds of different brush strokes um, you'll see me just do small strokes long strokes i might go into the stippling a little bit just trying to figure out how can I get what I want to get as far as that inner ear part and make it look right, make it look like what I want it to be. Again, trial and error. I'll give you the reference photo once again. What are we thinking right now? What do you think? Does it look good? Um, just shoot me a comment. Like, do you think it's actually starting to look like a reference photo? And at the same time, like, do I need to follow it to a T? Not really. But at the same time, yes, I do. Because if I want this to be a portrait of somebody's pet, you got to be as close to that photo as possible. So anyway, here's that photo for comparison to what I've done so far. There is my longer liner brush. Actually, this is the longest one I own. It's really great for fine, long lines like you see me put down here. Because now I'm going to go back over again. Make up your mind, girl. You just kind of covered half of that up and now you're going back in. Why did you do that? Well, technically, because like I said, trial and error. I don't really know what I'm doing painting this ear. First time ever doing an ear. So it is learning as I go. I thought that it needed more shadows, more refinement. So I go back in with the dark color. adding shadows with a darker color all around the edges if you've never painted fur before this is my biggest tip you go in layers and layers you work out mid-tones and then you start to work in your shadows and your highlights and you build up as many layers as you think are needed now there is some patience involved with this please do not be afraid to try things because sometimes you're just gonna have to do it sometimes you just have to go for it do things step back look at it go like oh yeah that worked or hmm, that didn't work back to the drawing board You'll see me make a mistake here pretty soon there it is and that's how i fixed it i just rubbed it off and somewhat into the canvas you can see it left a little bit of a brownish smudge um, you can totally use your fingers like i said before i would highly recommend not to use paper towel because that way you might actually leave a bit of fiber on your painting because it's still wet i love this liner brush and how it do, does the small strokes i am doing all these like tiny little details i'm in my happy place doing this even though i struggled through this painting i absolutely enjoyed putting in all the little details and i that is the joy of painting too and being in the moment enjoying what you're currently doing don't look at the whole just i'm painting i'm happy things are good
see my hand isn't always very steady and I really suck at straight lines to be honest. So what I do is I use my pinky and the side of my hand to just stabilize my hand so I can make, you know, better strokes that way. So if that is something uh, that you haven't tried yet, do that. Make sure that the paint is dry though. So whatever you put your pinky on or your hand on, that your paint is dry which is nice with acrylics because they dry fast. If you're working with oils, you've seen people work using those, you know, a stick or a rod or something like that, just to prevent them from touching the paint. Now you'll see me change the angle of the brush or my hands, and then also even the brush technique that I use. And it's okay, you just do whatever you feel is right. Like here I'm trying to fill in like small little spaces where white is still coming through or I'm doing longer strokes or like I said, I'm changing the angle of the brush. Sometimes I go um, up to down, down to up, you know, top to bottom, bottom to top or diagonal. It's all good. Don't make everything uniform and the same because that is not going to make your painting look good. Now, I don't know how many layers or how many colors I have put on this ear but it's starting to pay off it's starting to look more like actual fur in my opinion we're getting there we're getting there You'll see me change direction. Sometimes I change the pressure. That's all ways that you can do your brush strokes, right? You can change the direction in which you're doing your stroke. You can change the pressure. The more pressure you put on, the more paint you'll transfer, the lighter pressure, the less paint, and the smaller the lines will be. Experiment with this, you know, and eventually you'll come to the result that you need to come to. Okay, back to the round brush. I'm going to smooth things over where it may be harsh looking. Sometimes putting those liner brush strokes on the canvas really, you know, transfers pretty harshly. So I'm going back in with a softer brush just to make it look smoother, softer, fluffier. If you like your harsh lines, yeah, by all means, leave them in there. But I wasn't too happy and so therefore I used this round brush to make it look softer and fluffier. So once in a while, it is very smart and a good thing to stand back from your painting because, you know, if you are like gazing at it, you know, mere inches or centimeters away from your eyes, it all looks different. So I sometimes do get up in the middle of my painting, step back, you know, about a meter, three feet and look at it. And then you may be saying, oh, actually that looks really great because who's going to look at a painting like mere centimeters away from it, right? It hangs on a wall, usually you're a distance away from it. So step back, look at it, reevaluate. Ah, what needs more work? Or hey, wait a minute, that needs no more work. It looks good. Step back from your painting for once in a while. the need apparently to tweak the outside once more <laughs> and go back in there and create that little bit of a fluffy fluffy glowy type effect and like I said the other ear I will start with that probably with a you know bit of a darker gray first and then working to a bit of a lighter gray the further out I go and then start layering my browns on top because this was a bit annoying to do in my opinion. It's not impossible, but I didn't like it.
Now, one of my favorite parts is the glazing. I tend to do that after all the details are done when I figure, okay, that's enough details, that's enough layers. Then I go in with the glazing and glazing, you just take the color paint that you want and you water it down. Like it becomes kind of translucent, transparent so that everything else still shines through. Some will call it color correcting as well, but I, I don't like that term because to me that implies I made mistakes because now I need to correct it. Uh, I think I, think I want to look at it more as refining, not necessarily correcting. So if you, if you feel like something needs more of a shadow or a warmer tone or a cooler tone or a bit of a highlight, that's what glazing is really, really great for. I never used it before until I discovered it. <laughs> like I said, I am, you know, self-taught. It changed the game of my paintings for sure. I was quite in my element when I was putting this color down. I loved how this made the fur look so fluffy at the base, you know, and how it all tied everything together. I was quite, quite happy at this point because it was starting to, you know, really come together. Overall, painting this ear took me about 51 minutes. And that includes the um, mixing of paint and reloading the brush. So 51 minutes, this is the ear that I have at this point. And I will give you a little bit of a sneak peek of what the painting looks like as of right now. So you can see it with different colors. It makes it more cohesive. It brings it more together than just having that white showing at the back. Now, my next painting video will be about fur and the layering process. So stay tuned for that. For now, stay happy, keep your peace. Bye.